God will provide. God always, always provides for what we need. For four years, I lived at Notre Dame Seminary in New Orleans. And every time I would walk through the front door of the seminary, I was reminded that God will provide. Because above the door of the seminary, there is a press. And on the bottom of the press, it says in Latin, God will provide. They use providence. In fact, that became such a big deal for us at the seminary that we would say it at the end of announcements and things like that. We, I think it meant that the, per, the person who was giving the announcement would say it in Latin, Deus Providevit, and we would say it in English, I think, God will provide. The reason that we had that reminder over the door of the seminary was because of a man named John William Shaw. Somewhere around 120 years ago or so, John William Shaw decided that he was going to discern a vocation to the priesthood. So John Shaw went to seminary and he prayed and he learned and he entered into formation and after some years in seminary, the bishop said that John William needed to go to study in Rome. He was a gifted student and it would be good to have some priests, local priests who had studied in Rome. And so he went off to Rome. Now, the Wright brothers had not yet flew an airplane. And certainly no one had any idea how to take an airplane over the Atlantic Ocean at that time. So when I say he went to Rome, I mean he packed up his stuff, he got on a boat, and went to Rome. After he was there for a while, he got a communication that his dad had died. There was no way for him to come home for the funeral. There were no airplanes. His dad had died here in America. He was in Rome. What do you do? Obviously, that was hard for John William. So he went to the rector the priest in charge of the seminary, and he said, Father, I don't know what to do. I, my dad died. And, and one thing that the priest told him stuck with him. The priest said to John William, God will provide. They use the ridiculous. Years later, when John, after John William Shaw became a priest, John William Shaw became the Archbishop of New Orleans. And Archbishop Shaw was responsible for building Notre Dame Seminary. So, above the door, at the entrance of the seminary, is his crest. And underneath his crest, is his model. Because every bishop, when you become a bishop, you, you pick a model. Bishop Bob has one, it's comfort my people. Every, every bishop, you become a bishop, you pick a model. And John William Shaw, when he became a bishop, he chose the model. God will provide. Because he knew that God always, always, always provides and he didn't know it just because he read it in books. He didn't know it just because people had told him about it, though that was good. But he knew it because he had experienced it. When his dad died and he was on the other side of the world almost, he knew that God provided for him. That when he went to prayer, that when he needed God to comfort him, that when he needed Jesus Christ to be with him in this time of mourning, in this time of being away from his family, that God did in fact provide. And then I am sure over and over again, God provided for Archbishop Shaw. And 
He's reminded a hundred years worth of Samaritans. God does. I was ordained a priest three years ago in St. Joseph's Co Cathedral in Thibodeau. Here at home in Thibodeau, we've got two cathedrals. Um, most dioceses have one. And most of the time, people are ordained priests in St. Francis Cathedral in Poland. But because of circumstances around the 40th anniversary of the diocese, and an important anniversary for St. Joseph, they, they, they said, well, we'd like to have y'all ordained priests in St. Joseph Group people. That had a lot of personal meaning for me. I was baptized in St. Joseph Parish in Rain, Louisiana. Even though I'm from Church Point, I was baptized in Rain. Had a great devotion to St. Joseph for a while now. And in St. Joseph Group Right above where the altar is now. If you look up, you'll see a crest. And if you look at the bottom of the crest, right above the ceiling, above the altar, at St. Jerusalem, at least where it is now, you'll see those same words. God. He's not always come through with what I want, but he has always come through with what I need and with what is best for me. And that is what we see today in the Bible, in the Gospel of the Bible. The disciples have no idea what to do. Well, they do have an idea, it's just a bad one. And Jesus says, or rather, Jesus does. He provides his Master, the day's over. There's no food around here. And the crowd is really, really big. Send them home. Heard it. 
blesses the bread. They distribute the loaves and the fish. They only had five loaves of bread and two fish. And by the end of it, when more than 5,000 people had eaten of it, they got 12 baskets full of leftovers. They had more leftovers than they had when they started cooking. Now, we all know that's what happened. They had more left that they weren't cooking, but they had more leftovers than when they started. That is what happens when we trust Jesus. One time Jesus said to Peter, you are thinking not like God does, but like human beings do. This time too, the disciples were thinking not like God does. We don't have food. We can't do it. We can't take care of them. They got to go to the village. They were thinking like human beings do. But Jesus said, no, I will provide, and I will provide in a super abundant way. And we are called, like the disciples, to trust in Him. Here's the last thing. There was another time in the Gospels where Jesus, he was going to go and, and raise, a, raise a little girl from the dead. And when he was getting to the house to raise a little girl from the dead, there were some people there who said, look, she's already dead. Don't trouble the teacher anymore. She's already dead. Can't do anything about it. Like, we'll be here, like, we'll agree with you, but then, like, just let it go. And the Bible says in Mark 5, 36, but ignoring what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of this world, do not fear, only trust. When we really believe that God will provide, when we really believe that God will provide even more than we need, more than we can ask or even imagine. When we believe that, or when we're struggling to believe that, and when we're trying to believe that, and when we're moving towards that, there well will be people who say, it's not worth it. Stop bothering the Lord with that. I, this is just as good as it gets. There will be naysayers. There will be people, and there will be the demons who are trying to tempt us and turn us away from the Lord. Say, no. No. Nothing will separate me from the love of God. Like St. Paul tells us in Romans in the second reading. No, I know that nothing will separate us from the love of God. I know that I have been baptized. I know that the only way that I don't go to heaven is, I, is if I commit a moral sin. And I know that even if I do commit a moral sin, I can go to confession and then go to heaven. Praise be to God in His mercy. I know that nothing can separate me from God's care for me. Nothing can separate me from God's love for me. And so, no, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, naysayers. Get, be get behind me those things that drag me down because I am a beloved child of God. I will not fear. I will believe. And God will 